you for agreeing to talk with us about Salud and your experiences or your work with um, the Latino community in terms of the wine industry and laborers and, and, and so forth. So what I'd like to do is, is to start by telling us a little bit about yourself, how you came to work in the healthcare field, and just a little bit of background about who you are. Okay. <laughs> Great question. Um, well, I was born and raised in Costa Rica. I came to the U.S. Uh, in my late teens, um, newlywed, mm -hmm. <laughs> married too young, but it's been a good, a, a very good uh, experience. <laughs> no regrets. Zero regrets. No regrets. Um, and and I just came straight to. Um, to college, I came to first to Seattle, and then my husband and I moved to Alaska, and that's where I was trying to figure out what we were, what I was going to do education-wise. Mm -hmm. um, that was always a, an expectation from you know from my parents, right. uh, and that was look, okay. So now what? Um, and the healthcare was always in my mind. Um, originally, I wanted to be a journalist. That's that was wow. my that's what I wanted to to study. And eventually, I end up in in the nursing program. Um, and you know, before I left Costa Rica, I was thinking going again the journalist. So I was also mm -hmm. thinking about the dental profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got here, you know, reality really hit really hard. Yeah. And okay, so what was was what was available? And uh, we had a, a friend of ours through my husband's work. Up in in, um, in Anchorage, and she was involved with the Portland uh, with the uh, Anchorage Community College, mm -hmm. and that's how I started investigating more about uh, different options and in the healthcare field. Again, okay. resurface okay. that's a very good option okay. for me. And then, how did you end up down here in, in Hillsboro? Uh, I end up here. I started at Wally, um through a. a small tiny little ad in the Oregonian um, that they were looking for a bilingual occupational health nurse okay. um, really part-time and I just and I just knew because this was my second trip to Oregon we were just we I came here for about a year and a half and then we moved to Hawaii and then we came back to Oregon and and um, so I started doing agency nursing First, kind of figured out, you know, figured out where, where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And my first trip from uh, to Oregon, I learned about the Latino community. Okay. I was at the time I was working at um, at St. Vincent's Hospital. And what year was this? That was in uh, eighty five, okay. late eighty five, eighty six. Okay. And I was at St. Vincent's. I was working at the open heart unit over there. And uh, and I started hearing about the Latino community and you know and all of that and I was assigned a lot of the patients that came into the mm -hmm. hospital and just kind of got my attention because where I live there were not many people right exactly uh, Latino so I said hmm, that's interesting and then we moved to Hawaii and then came back and uh, four years so five years later we came back uh, to Oregon and that's when I started looking more into into the community and what what was available mm -hmm. and so working as an agency nurse allowed me to visit several hospitals in the okay. Portland metro area and really see what was available and what have you and then this little ad just just got my attention mm -hmm. and I called and there was the occupational health services here for Tuality okay. and um, and I just came and I said, I don't know anything about occupational health. <laughs> I'm my bilingual Latina, so. That's right. That's <laughs> and right. I'm a fast yeah. learner, so. And that yeah. was, they took a chance. Okay. And it was, that's how it all began. Yeah. yeah. 20, years. 20, 20 years. 20 years. 20? 20, yeah, yeah 20, 20 years plus. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing. So then you um, made it down here and, and got involved in, in the community here. So what made you decide to start Salud? Well, uh, Salud, it was, I was involved with Salud in a very indirect way from the beginning, kind of. Because the program started in 92, right? Okay, 92. So I got involved through my director at the time. Okay. And she was very involved with the, with the program, with the, with the first, um, 
the makeup of what salud was was all about okay. or what the creation thought, of the yeah. salud of thought let's put it that way and so she was she was finishing her master's in um in public health over at university of washington and this was her thesis okay so i kind of got involved with her but with her by because in the occupational health services we used to do uh, offer of first aid and CPR classes and other mm -hmm. things. So when they hired the first person that was through Virginia Garcia, that's what I knew. So yeah. we'll get back to there. I <laughs> we'll know. Get back to that. Through Virginia Garcia. So that's where the program was was house. base house yeah. at the time, and so I just started helping a little bit the the uh, the health educator that was hired at okay. the time, uh, just helping with some first aid and CPR classes. And that's how I started. Then I learned more about, you know, the agricultural workers mm -hmm. and, and more about the Latino community in general, in particular in this area mm -hmm. of, of, of our service area. And, and through, so that's how I got involved. Right. That's, that's, and it's, and then um, there was a big uh, change in the program and then Maria, and Dr. Reyes okay. and my director approached me to see if I if I was interested to look role. into this. At the time, I was working as the employee health nurse here for okay. Fort Tuolumne, okay. and uh, and it was I'll never forget yeah. that that luncheon at the Thai restaurant, the <laughs> <personal> health place. <laughs> what was it? Um, when you first started learning about the Latino community, especially mm -hmm. in agriculture, their health care needs, their mm -hmm. you know, particular um, issues with you know legal status and those kinds of things, that first kind of phase of starting to understand the community and their mm -hmm. needs, what were some of the things that um, that you discovered, or mm -hmm. how would you kind of define you know typically you know the challenges that, that migrant workers face in terms of mm -hmm. health care? Well, let me go back a little bit more because before I started, before I got involved with Salud, uh, I was working for the Occupational mm -hmm. Health Department. So we had a lot of, uh, we have accounts in different areas of uh, businesses in the area. Okay, yeah. And since I was the, the Spanish speaker, Spanish speaking nurse, um, I was given accounts where they had a very high numbers of, of Spanish, Spanish uh, speaking employees. And um, we, I got really involved with a company at the time here based in Cornelius called uh, Flavorland Foods. Right. And that's how I, I was, I used to go there once a week and working with the, with their employees mm -hmm. and they were all seasonal, mm -hmm. temporary employees. And that's how, how I started learning about you know, the many, many needs. Mm -hmm. Number one, many healthcare needs of the community, starting with the occupational setting, right. and then seeing what other things was were happening besides work, okay. you know, and, um, and getting to know about their families, getting to know where they live, getting to know, uh, or learning more about, you know, what other issues were around. And that's where I got really involved and I made a commitment to myself that I was going to start by developing health education. Um, I feel very privileged because coming from Costa Rica, I never had that experience of, you know, of, ac of having barriers for access to care right. or worrying about, you know, my legal status or, you know, where I was where I'm going to live. So I I did not know that piece of of migration or immigration. I had no clue mm -hmm. until I started hearing about the stories of the people that I met at these factories that I was going to work. Um, and it's just totally like mind blowing. Yes, yeah. because I was not expecting that. And, and through this other company, we used to do, and I say we because it was the team from the Occupational Health Department, and this company needed workers. 
when the fruit arrived right, exactly. at their place, they needed workers. So we will do like about 100 physical exams a day for this particular company. In a week period, we'll do, they needed about five to 600 people. And we go and set up, you know, this at, at, ch at a church mm -hmm. or a community center and we'll do all this physical and you just have people in line waiting to get in so that they can go and get a job at this particular factory. So they have to have kind of evidence that they're right. healthy, that they're, right. yeah. Right, right. And, and that's, again, that was another, like, moment I say, mm -hmm. oh my God. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just learning and asking more questions about to the people, you know, where are you from and how you got here and then you start mm -hmm. hearing about you know how they will come and work seasonal here they go back home some s actually were um, residents of the Texas area in they area so they will go yeah. back forth some came from Washington some from California mm -hmm. but many of them came from Mexico on a, on a regular basis and go back and forth. right and that's and again got my curiosity and I start reading more about the, the migrant migrant population mm -hmm. and um, and more about the Latino community here in, in our area. And and I knew at the time that for me, being from Costa Rica, that we I was a minority in that sense, that right. there were not many of us here. Exactly. Many of us here. So that it, it, and it was a good opportunity also to start learning about the Mexican culture okay. and, and, you know, all those needs. So okay. that's, yeah, that's how it started. started. So, um, Tell me a little bit about what the mission of Salud was when it started. And you, you know, you're starting to recognize these needs in the community mm -hmm. and, and kind of the unique situations of workers and laborers and kind of having this, you know, mm -hmm. revelation in a sense. So when Salud started, what, what was the general mission? What was the goal of... Before I became on board, well, before, or well, when it started, but also when you became more involved, oh, okay. did it okay. had, did it involve in any way, or has it changed over time? Well, um, when I when I first have well, those first conversations with you know with Maria and, and with Dr. Reyes and, and with my director about you know what the program needed, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was very obvious was to for me anyway. What my offer, my offer to to them was, sounds extremely interested. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very interested in public health community mm -hmm. outreach. Um, I bring my nursing skills, which are pretty good. I consider myself <laughs> an excellent nurse, and um, and I bring culture and language. Um, so those were my Your strengths. My Here's strengths. Yeah. Here's what I know. What you can bring. Yeah. Um, the rest, it will be, is pretty unknown, and I'm, and and I'm going to go there with really um, with eyes wide open, eyes wide open, uh, because I don't know much about it, and so we need to, I need to learn, and we need to work together on this to see how where this is going to go, because the the program at the time was going through, through a a. Um, a structuring, restructuring okay. of the program. Okay. And so we were working together. We were learning as, as you as we right. went. Uh, and so that was good because, you know, you, you went with very realistic goals that this is not going to be a, a easy thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be challenges and we're going to be learning as, as we go. So my first, my first assignment was to know and as an, as as a nurse, is you do you need to do an assessment. Exactly. You know, you yeah. assess your patient. Right. All right. See so what's going on. You need to know what's going on. You start asking questions. You kind of start creating a, a picture, mm -hmm. and start saying, okay, what what's next? What's what's the what's the possible diagnosis is in here? Right. And and how can we go about to to either find some solutions to this or to make it better? Um, so that was the first the first assignments to figure out what was there, what needed change based on the information that I got and the feedback from from the growers and the people that were so involved on this program, mm -hmm. um, and also what their ex expectations were, what they wanted to accomplish. 
much. Um, so the first assignment was just to do a needs assessment of, of the community, who, what Salud is all about, what has been done, what reports have been generated, uh, getting a, a good uh, foundation or, or, or a picture of what of the issues. And then for me, the biggest, then the next biggest challenge for me was to learn about migrant health. Because I said, like, I, like when I was say I, I like public health and like community health. But one thing that I realized really quickly is that migrant health is very unique. And it's true, it's connected with public health and community health, but it's a very unique category of other things. Of care. Oh, yes. Yeah. oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I didn't know anything about it. Mm. And um, and that was when I realized, oh my God, this mm -hmm. is going to be an yeah. interesting ride. <laughs> um, yeah. And then just connecting with people in the community, mm -hmm. connecting uh, number one with the with the clinic that was hosting Salud, um, mm -hmm. connecting there, and then going out to the areas where we knew that we needed to go. Uh, besides Washington County, besides Yamhill County, is that we had uh, patients or we have clients every in many other parts of the of the valley. So what are what are the needs? What need you know? What do they want? What is available in the community? You know, and just getting to know the people who and having that one to one conversation and then. And then finding out definitely who in the community is really a champion in migrant health. And how can I tap, you know, to these people, how can I make connections with these agencies or individuals that I know that can help me uh, to move forward with this. And, um, and that's how, you know, things have worked out. And I have been very fortunate to come across some phenomenal people that really know about migrant health and that offer, you know, they give me their hand and I took it and they guide me through through the process, provide me with tremendous amount of information. Um, one person that comes to mind is uh, Senor Carlos Medina from Salud Medical Center. At the time, he he was an amazing role model mm -hmm. and, and, and really a person who, who really um, <laughs> looked at me and he said, I'm going to show you about my health. The real, yeah, the yeah. real deal. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you. So you had good mentors. Yeah. Very good mentor. Mm -hmm. Then I also met Dr. Tin, uh, Tina Castañares. At mm -hmm. uh, she was at the time at La Clinica del Cariño in her river, okay. and La Clinica del Cariño was a was a model and continues today on migrant migrant health. And I went to a, a presentation that, that she had, one of a conference, and I was totally mesmerized yeah. by her presentation, by her knowledge, by, you know, by, by her uh, demeanor. She's an amazing leader, and I've been very privileged to, to continue working with her and, and become friends. And she also was a very excellent, an excellent role model, or continues to be an excellent role model for me. Um, you know, and like that, there's many, many others. Um, we, I also met at the time, and uh, uh, really the uh, the uh, manager at the time of the uh, of, um, of what's the West Selling Clinic, uh, lovely woman, also very knowledgeable, very open, and she also provided me with with immense uh, information. So, so those are people that I, you know, that I have, you know, going. And looking, read a lot on Morena Sprague. She also mm -hmm. works at Clinica de Cariño. She's done a, a tremendous amount of work on migrant health, and and she's done a lot on the community health workers model, okay. and also tremendous amount of information on from from the work that she's done. And and Noel Wiggins as well. She was uh, and she continues. She's now at Portland State University. Okay. But she um, worked with uh, with uh, Clinica de Cariño and the community health workers model and how to reach that that community. So those are people that have truly made a difference in my life and made an impact on how to approach you know the migrant health. Yeah. And then internally, we had you know people you know Maria comes with an amazing um, 
amount of information on, on the philanthropic and, and, mm -hmm. and how it, and what she wanted for, for this program mm -hmm. to go on that end. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been, my God, it's extremely helpful. Um, the, the passion that she brings, the knowledge that she brings, and, and then the, the other thing is Dr. Reyes. Um, he, he had a very clear idea how he, he see this program from his own experience. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, growing up in, in, in the Los Angeles area mm -hmm. and, you know, what he brought, those, those uh, ideas that he had mm -hmm. and, and he provided a lot of support and knowing, you know, as a Latino himself, of uh, descendant, what he saw was the need. Um, you know, and then we had the other doctors that were here in, in the facility right. that, that, you know, that saw the patients themselves mm -hmm. and, and suggestions that they made. Mm -hmm. and. And then the information that I got from my director uh, at the time, Chris Denning, the same thing. Okay. You know what she what she learned through her right. studies, and right. what she thought that the program should go based, you know, on the information that she's collected, and and so all that stuff kind of started falling into in, place. Into place. Right. And uh, and the other champions of the program, you know, Terry Castile, mm -hmm. he he had a very clear idea as well where he wanted to see this program go uh, providing tremendous amount of guidance and support and always open to bounce back ideas and right. provide feedback so it's uh, so you know a lot of people involved yes. in yeah. making it work yeah. Eileen Eileen Jerry the same thing from Crystal another person who provided a lot of a lot of support okay. as well good yeah so tell me a little bit about the needs of migrant workers when it comes to health care and um, kind of what you see in the work that you do with them? Mm -hmm. okay. um, what, I've, what I've learned with, with the, the population is the barriers that they have uh, to access for, for care mm -hmm. and the, those challenges, um, you know, where, where to go, uh, how, to, how to access those, mm -hmm. those services. And that is the one area that that I've I've worked really hard mm -hmm. along with my team in facilitating that that process. Uh, the other the other thing that we work really hard is in the education piece. Okay. Um, the population and that's changing a little bit. Yes. Uh, but the population, in essence, at the time when I started the program, was a very young population. Mm -hmm. uh, people in their mid twenties. Twenties, right healthy, strong, right. you know, uh, the men in excellent, you know, excellent health condition, um, uh, but, and, and the women, the same thing, young, you know, uh, pretty healthy, healthy pregnancies, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, even those who didn't seek prenatal care yeah. early on, they had, you know, healthy babies okay. and, and the whole thing, but as, as we... As people stayed in the country, then you begin to see changes in their health mm -hmm. behaviors and their health, and they they themselves see those changes mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's how and how do you do that? And how and the other challenge is that many waited so long. Bef if they were sick, they waited right. so long to seek medical care, and by the time they got to a hospital, they were so sick. sick that we needed to do something about it. What, mm -hmm. what do you, you know, what are the steps or how can we facilitate mm -hmm. for you or if you have a child, mm -hmm. tell me about it, what, what are those barriers? So we, we have done several um, surveys asking people that information because the best, the best thing that I could do is get that feedback from, from the audience. Tell me what works for you, what doesn't work, what are those barriers that you encounter, uh, so on how, what suggestions you have. Mm -hmm. and, and so I take that very seriously, and it's been of great help mm -hmm. uh, to do that. And then, um, so that's been, I think, the, the best method that I, that I have used is to get their feedback and then use that information to put it to work. And do they, facilitate. have they been, do they find Salud a comfortable space where they can convert? Do you feel that 
they feel that they can be open and honest and forthright with you? Do you, you know, how is there, how is the community's response to Salud been? Uh, one of the things that I feel very um, lucky about it is that, that uh, relationship and that trust in mm -hmm. relationships that, that we have built with, with the community. Mm -hmm. um, our, for, it, our population, our, my clients, talk to us about things from healthcare to legal issues mm -hmm. to mental health mm -hmm. to economics to stress, I mean, stressors at home, at work. They're all kind of they related, are yeah. they're extremely open with us. And um, one thing that I tell my staff, particularly when we hire a new person, mm -hmm. is that we have already built that, that working relationship and that trusting relationship. Mm -hmm. And I need that to be honored. Right. And that we need to and that we need that I need that to continue. Mm -hmm. So I tell them we're already facilitating this rapport. So we gotta maintain keep it. it, maintain it, and straighten. Um, so that is one of the big requirements that mm -hmm. that I have in my with my team, mm -hmm. and 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 the people that have worked for me so far have really honored mm -hmm. that piece. Why do you think the community views Salud that way, or why do you think you know there's this trust? It, by your clients in what you do, because um, so often we hear about you know because of the the, the status of workers that mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to really mm -hmm. you know trust different mm -hmm. you know sectors in our society. So why what is it about Salud do you think that has has worked? In I, that way? Yeah, I think for Salud what really work is that from the get go, at least since I've been in the picture of the Salud program, mm -hmm. is that we have. Um, I have access to the workers. So we've been able to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, again, the owners of, of the vineyards and the wineries have facilitated that access to, mm -hmm. to their workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, going into, the, into, the, into a vineyard and explain to a worker why we are there. Right. Uh, reassuring them that, that they, whatever they tell us is totally confidential. Mm -hmm that if they require any help from us, if we need to present a case, let's say, uh, that is related to them, it's going to be presented in very general terms. We do not say where that person work. Right. We don't give names. We don't say, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, keep, it's very neutral. And, and that communication, and it's just the follow-up communication that we have. Mm -hmm. If the person talked to us, it's calling back, I did this, how are you doing? Were you able to get into the clinic? Can I help you right. get into the clinic? Let's get in the phone right now. Let's work on these together. So working alongside with, with the person mm -hmm. um, and building that trusting relationship right there on the spot. And, um, and ask them, you know, let's, I kind of do it by myself. Mm -hmm. Let me, um, Let me help you. show you, yeah, yeah or yeah, give you the, the assistance that, that you need or the mm -hmm. points that I think will be helpful mm -hmm. for this type, for this situation. Mm -hmm. and, and call me back. This is our phone number. I'm available. Uh, just call. If I don't call you right away, I will call you within 12 hours. But mm -hmm. you'll, you're going to get a phone call from us, from me or somebody in my team within 24 right. hours. And, again, we honor that. We, we really... Um, under that thing, and, and one thing that we established from the very beginning on the program was to do a 1-800 line okay. so that people know that they can reach us 24-7, and I tell them we're not available 24-7, <laughs> but, they but can you can leave a message yeah. over the weekend, on a Friday night, and somebody is going to get hold of you on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's been the case, uh, and I think that report and and just going having a presence at work at the work site, mm -hmm. not just for the outreach um, service, but for other issues that they need, um, offering different programs. You know, um, like for example, one example I could use is uh, uh, first aid and CPR classes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so there's this class is going to be available. 
it would be great if you if you come and so and so we sell that that way you know it's good for you if you learn it this it's not just good for work for your work site mm -hmm. but it's also good if if you need it outside work mm -hmm. site so you sell that you do you do different programs you know that that um, that are helpful for again for the work site and, mm -hmm. and at home as well so it's just continuing to work on that building uh, Trust, right. the trust, the re right. working relationship, right. and that mutual respect. Um, the same thing, just and and finding those who are the um, who are our uh, key people in the vineyards too. Right. Uh, who is their leader and building that relationship? So using with that kind that of work exactly, hierarchy in a sense exactly, with with that individual. Interesting. Or, or for example, because we identified everybody. So let's say that we connect with the wife. Mm -hmm. of the worker okay okay or vice versa so right. we connect with that individual at home and say oh by the way your husband so-and-so give me your name and number so i'm calling because he's concerned or she's concerned about this and then that's how we start nice. building that relationship so we work we're building relationships at home and at work interesting and i think that's to me that has really um been um the most successful mm -hmm. and because you continue working on, on those trusted That's relationships. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the relationship with Salud and the vineyard owners? Because from, from what I understand, they've been, you know, strong advocates of providing health care for their workers mm -hmm. and, and um, so could you talk a little bit about that relationship, you know, you clearly have good bonds of trust and, mm -hmm. and, and productive relationships with the workers, your clients that you mm -hmm. serve. Mm -hmm. But what about kind of other members of the community, vineyard owners, kind of wider communities, mm -hmm. and how has their support been for Salud kind of over the history of the, of the organization? Well, um, I think with the, with, with this vineyard owners and the winery owners, they have made a commitment in, to these programs the get go. Mm -hmm. uh, they're here because they want to be. Um, they have made an investment in, in many in many fronts, mm -hmm. in 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 their product, in their workers, in in the mission of, of this program. Mm -hmm. um, so the relationship there you see it, I see it every day mm -hmm. in, in many ways. In their in the committee work that they do, in the in the many committees that we have. Uh, their you know donations, their participation, um, their openness for us to come and, and see the, the, access the workers, the access to the workers. They're facilitating if we cannot go to the vineyard, but let's say that we have an activity in a in a vineyard nearby, then facilitating the making sure that the workers come to that event. Mm -hmm. um, so those are examples that I that I can use mm -hmm. that I, I can tell you. Mm -hmm that really reflect their commitment. So they, in essence, make your work possible yes. in terms of, of material support, but also access to access their spaces. To exactly. And, exactly. And, and, the, and then that communication, you know, if there is an issue, let's say, going on, then I make sure that I clear whatever is mm -hmm. the issue, that I connect with that person mm -hmm. and ask, okay, I hear there is uh, uh, a concern. Okay. Can, can let's talk about it. What is it? How can we, you know, how can we help? How how can mm -hmm. we make this better? So it is again reaching out and 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 asking. So it's almost it seems in a sense you're almost a bridge between the workers and the owners, and yes. perhaps in some ways you can get access to information from workers mm -hmm. that they may not be comfortable taking to an owner or, right. or again, in just the work that you do, the things that come up in your conversations right. and your discussions. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that, you know, I, again, it's, it's been, uh, for me, it's been a privilege um, and an honor, like, to have built those relationships mm -hmm. because there's been many times when I get phone calls from the owners mm -hmm. about issues that their, a particular worker is having mm -hmm. that is not work-related. I see. But something else, and okay. they're so concerned about it, and they call and ask, 
can you give him a call? Can you find out what's going on? Can you help this individual? Because I'm concerned about I him see. or her. And so, to me, that speaks volume that they're paying not just attention to the to what's happening, you know, work wise. The economic part. But yeah. they're also doing uh, paying attention to other to other issues going on with the workforce. Do you know if the you know the the crews, the groups of workers that come to various vineyards, do are they are they coming back year after year? Have they been working for particular owners for long stretches of time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the one thing with with the with the program is that it's a family it's a family atmosphere because mm -hmm. one thing with with this industry is that it started, you know, the the owners themselves had to work the land, That's right? That's right. And so the workers have been with them. Some of them have been with them from the from the, the time from the very yes. beginning, from the yes. time that they cut the first tree and they plant the first right. vine, right? So is um, so that built that built those relation really strong bonds. So we do see um, yes people that have been with this family for years. Mm -hmm. For years, yeah. and then and this particular individual, let's say if that person now is the foreman or mm -hmm. or the vineyard manager, how that person also brings you know higher people that he or she knows. So there's a lot of connection right. in the vineyards where there is you know brothers, sisters, sisters-in-law, mm -hmm. you know cousins mm -hmm. or people that come from the same town mm -hmm. in in, in Mexico. Mexico where they they come from. So there's there's a lot of connectivity. Which is very that. typical of migrant communities yes. and uh -huh. structures and yeah. so forth. And even and even I see that same structure even with the with the contractors. Huh. That they also have very tight family very yeah, family ties mm -hmm. and people from kinda the area where they come from, either from Mexico or Guatemala that mm -hmm. they're kinda the same. So they have a lot of common, common things. Yeah. Do you think that's why, because of this kind of the way in which the industry developed in Oregon around these kind of close, you know, migrant workers and the owners kind of working together from the very beginning, that they were more attuned to issues of health care and, you know, some of the basic, because we don't always see this in, in other migrant communities where, there's no connection between you know the owner of the enterprise and the workers, and I've I've found it interesting and, and somewhat unique that there's such an investment on the part of vineyard owners to the health and well-being of of their workers. Yeah, because again, these are these are people that have been with them for many many years, mm -hmm. and these are people that come do the work that they are temporarily or seasonal. Let's put it mm -hmm. seasonal. Mm -hmm. They work with them for nine months out of the year, mm -hmm. or some six months, seven months, some, you know, the, mm -hmm. just the core group, maybe it's one or two individuals that are with them mm -hmm. the year round. But the rest of the people come in a seasonal basis. Right. So, and they, and they see, they see, and so they make that investment because the other thing too is once, once you have a, a worker that knows how to treat your vines, knows right. the vines, know your land, knows mm -hmm. everything, you don't want that person to go too far right. away, right. because that, you know it's, it's a it's, very skilled it's kind very of thing. skill work. You know we don't think about it, and that's I think that's one of the misconceptions that we have in the larger community when we're talking about agricultural workers. Yes. That is a very skillful. It, the, you need to have a skill mm -hmm. to do that job. That's right. It's not easy. You need to know how to trim. You need to know how to take care of. Mm -hmm of that plan and depends how you treat that plan, how you in the in the wine anyway with the vines is that you need to know which which canes are going to go and right, which exactly. cut off. And that will make that will determine the quality, the quality of the of the yes. fruit and, and the yes. amount of the fruit. So yes. and if you don't know that you have you learn that's a skill. Right. Something that you and I do not know. So and you learn it. You learn it as 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 you go, and mm -hmm. and I think that's again in agriculture that's one of the misconceptions that we have. Well, anybody can go and pick up. No, no, no. no. I teach a course on on no. the history of migrants to, to the United States, and we have we talk a lot about the work and yes. how skilled it is. And the agriculture work is not just you no, know, it's going not just go and right. no, it's it's uh, you need to learn it, right. and it's it's a lot of skill.
you have mean? you seen the scope of your work or the needs of migrants change over time? I mean, you mentioned earlier kind of the, you know, the early generation of workers that you dealt with were relatively healthy and, and, and strong and young. Um, has that, I mean, has your population changed over time? Um, are there new and different kinds of issues that you have to face with working with them today as opposed to when you first started working with the seven? Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I see with, with the worker, well, number one, they're gaining, <laughs> they're getting older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, so I see that. I see, I see that, you know, they change and I, and I see them mature, which is mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Just mm -hmm. for me, it is it is great to see these young men that I met, you know, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. and at, you know now he's in his mid 30s, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and so and just to see them just mature grow. So what what I see that is that is changing is the uh, at least health wise. Is the creeping of the chronic diseases? Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, that's and that continues to be an issue. Is the is the high numbers in, in diabetes? Mm -hmm. So we deal with that on a on a annual ba daily basis, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And so our the role here is just to make sure that the person understands what this means long term, mm -hmm. if, um, if they develop into full blown di diabetes mm -hmm. later on. So we, we deal with with that with with the chronic diseases. Um, the, the other thing health-wise that, that I see is, um, we've been talking a lot about, you know, the prenatal care, making sure that, that women have that access mm -hmm. to, to the care, that their pregnancies are healthy, mm -hmm. and that we continue to do that within, you know, with this, within the Latino community in general. Right. Um, but definitely within the migrant population, mm -hmm. it's very, very important. So how, we, making sure that that happens mm -hmm. um, so those are those are the main things that I, that I see the chronic mm -hmm. chronic diseases mm -hmm. and um, and making sure that people have access mm -hmm. to the prenatal care mm -hmm. and then we do the other thing that that I see that is that we have made a big improvement for us is the dental outreach mm -hmm. um, we have again created awareness of it and so we see great improvements on on the dental health mm -hmm. of individuals, um, but we continue to see challenges on the dental health mm -hmm. from the newcom newcomers. Um, and so that's something that that is ongoing, yes. ongoing work. Because and dental, we put a great emphasis on dental. It's because it's so systemic, meaning that it mm -hmm. it will affect you from head to toe. If you that's if you right. don't have a healthy mouth, you you do not have a healthy body. Mm -hmm. So we make that a high priority in how to to make sure that we provide those services yes. and that education. Um, then the other thing that that we see is again with with you know with the children of of the of the workers is making sure that they know about their vaccinations. You know mm -hmm. all that a baby. Um, well, well, child, well child uh, exams that those are up to date. That people mm -hmm. are aware, you know, if the child uh, qualifies, making sure that he or she is in the Oregon Health Plan, mm -hmm. or if the employer off if the employer offers health insurance, make it in you know, explaining how to use it right. and how to access it because that's a challenge too, mm -hmm. is um, how to use those services that are being offered, uh, but the person does not know how to access. Is it, do you find that, is it an issue solely of not in education, not knowing how to access, or is there sometimes resistance to accessing services because of other extenuating circumstances, like status or language or? I think it's a combination of mm -hmm. all of those. Um, you know, it's just to, number one is to teach, with with health insurance and regardless whether it's private or is you know government mm -hmm. uh, subsidized or even our the things that we offer the, the assistance that we offer right. uh, when people have to seek 
the medical, medical care. care is that is to explain a person how to how to access those services mm -hmm. and for them to have a very clear understanding you know this is these are the process these are the steps that you need mm -hmm. to take um, you know if if you have our program that's all you have then make sure that you know that you show this little card that mm -hmm. we give you and this is there will be a charge this is what you need to provide mm -hmm. to the clinic because it's going to be based on your income so you need to can't go to the clinic prepare with mm -hmm. X, Y, and C. If you need to do financial assistance at a major facility at a hospital, this is why you need to bring because these are the requirements that they're going to ask you. Mm -hmm. And and what I see is that all that education is paying off because people learn it, people use it, and then they pass it to others. Yes. And this is something that we always emphasize mm -hmm. if you know already how to use it if it's been a good you know the experience, experience for right. you even if it doesn't it hasn't worked let us know what didn't work so that we can figure out and see what else what other improvements needs to make but also pass that information so again others. really it's not just about providing actual physical care it's the education aspect the education that's gonna aspect. then kind of feed off right. into other sectors. So what one thing that, that we also, other things that we do with the Salud program is, is that we bring other people from the community, other agencies from the community. Um, for me personally, education is so it's important. It. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. so important. Yeah. So we make sure um, that, uh, that we connect with all the different programs, like the migrant education program, the uh, English as a second language program. So we have made that a priority. I mean, we don't do those services directly, but you we link have them into look into agencies that will provide that service right. to the population. So we bring them along with us. They come, they make a presentation of their services, mm -hmm. and we have find out in each county who does that service. So they come with us, or they give us their brochure or whatever, and then we pass it out to the people and say, you know, there's going to be English classes. This is the person from the migrant education. Mm -hmm. So for your child, um, this is, you know, this other agency does this and this other agency is doing wow. that. Okay. So we're connecting people with those services out in the community because I know that we cannot do everything mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's sure. impossible. But I also know that all of these things have are related to health. Yeah. Education, economics, you know, the um, where to go for if you have a legal issue, where you need to go mm -hmm. for for that information of who you can call, um, you know, if you need to open a bank account, where do you go right. for that? You know, if you need whatever is right. is so we have created a really um, list of things that people can use, and and we bring in those agencies to come and you know I mean that's what they are right, right. in the community so. Right. This is what you do. This is this is their phone number, uh, mm -hmm. and I have come across, for example, families that let's say they have an appointment in, in Portland, uh, some sort of appointment, appointment, mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. appointment. They have to go to OHSU. Or they have to go to some other. Transportation is a big issue if you live out in, you know, Yam Hill, Yam Hill, yeah. or if you live out in, uh, you know, in Amity or right. those areas. How do you get yeah. into? How do you get to Portland? To that it's not a simple you know take this bus, bus and it will take exactly you. and exactly. and I had experiences like that where you know I I we had a family who had a very preemie baby that lived in the in the in ICU for God for about four months wow. and they traveled from Dayton to mm -hmm. Portland almost on a daily basis mm -hmm. I mean that had to take the Greyhound bus. And I can tell you how many times we took him to, you know, the bus station mm -hmm. to catch up the bus to take him to Dayton. Mm -hmm. um, so and so how and how do you find what are what 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 services are available? For example, if a person needs to go to OHSU mm -hmm. or some other hospital, what services are available mm -hmm. at that facility that that person mm -hmm. can have? And so so those are examples that you know that just that that are all. Related, you know, related to health is all of that, you know, from from the education to the finances to the legal. They're to, all woven they're together. They're all woven to what, together, yeah. and you cannot do one without the other. Right. And um, and that's one thing that our program has done. It's not just 
it's just not just the outreach for the help, but it's the it's the other one. And um, wow. and that is things that you know that that we get. I mean, I get phone calls from parents. Let's say that the child just had issue at school because mm -hmm. of whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. so how do you do that? How do you connect with those? teachers at that elementary school mm -hmm. or at that high school mm -hmm. or whatever. This is, you know, have you called the counselor? Have mm -hmm. you connected with these so-and-so, you know? Because so a lot of it, I would like, imagine, is cultural stuff that totally. they don't, you know, totally. know how it's to operate in kind exactly. of the culture of education here exactly. or yeah. with authority yeah. figures yeah. and those kinds of right. things. In particular, I think for me, and, I, and I'm now speaking from my own experience, um, you know, I found the school system here very complex mm -hmm. and I come with education I mm -hmm. come well informed and I don't have a language barrier right and I found that Same for, me, yes. that for my my own experience for my kids I found the uh, the education system complicated mm -hmm. and the expectations that what the expectation is as a, as a parent that you are expected to volunteer at your school mm -hmm. to come into the classroom mm -hmm you know, to be involved with the PTA, to all these. And a lot of us coming from from other countries abroad, that's not the routine. Especially in Latin America. No. Yeah, not at teacher, all. Teacher Teachers has the full authority control, figure. the authority. And yes. boy, if you go to school, it's because something is really wrong. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, and so how do you gap that bridge? How mm -hmm. do you teach the individual, those families, you know what, yes, you do. That's an expectation. Mm -hmm. And so you talk, you, 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 you uh, share your own experiences on why it's so important mm -hmm. for the par parent-teacher conferences, mm -hmm. you know, to volunteer school, right. and uh, you know, and all those things that are totally new for everybody. Mm -hmm. And just to tell the parent too, which I found myself a lot telling the parent is, you know, you're the parent. If you need to go talk to a teacher, you have the right to do. You that. have the right to do, and don't use your child's interpreter. Right. Bring exactly. somebody else. Bring someone else. So and they kind of look at me and say, "No, it's don't use." <laughs> well, it's, it speaks to all those you know interesting dynamics about the children yeah. of migrant workers and right. how they you know they are socialized in a way different mm -hmm. from their parents mm -hmm. and and kind right. of the, the the unique right position those children can be put right. in sometimes. Right, and yeah. I talk to the parents a lot about that dilemma mm -hmm. about those. Differences, now cultural mm -hmm. differences between their children and them, mm -hmm. and and how that challenge that create in a family. Yeah. And so we talked a lot about that and where and where to, you know, where to seek assistance or just say if you need to talk to somebody, just just call me. I well, I just listen and we just right. can talk about right, it. Right, 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 right. And so. So again, yes. as salute is kind of this bridge almost mm -hmm. to. Helping migrants negotiate the culture, but connecting them with resources that will help them, yeah. and educating them mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. a whole host of things. Right, and even for us, is also educating our own colleagues. Like I cannot tell you how many times in our office, how many conversations we had in our office with healthcare facilities mm -hmm. about how to. You know about their what their the barriers that they're putting on like say if somebody goes to the facility and, and require financial assistance mm -hmm. it's not you know or or when a person is sent to collections you know mm -hmm. well what's the communication what's the was language ever considered mm -hmm. did, did you explain to the person what is the process and 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 just go through the whole process of you know of of that talking to providers, some extremely helpful, other ones are like, oh my God, I can't believe you're a provider. By their attitude, by their, mm -hmm. you know, demeanor, it's, 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 it's heartbroken sometimes. So do you it's find, I mean, you've had lots of support from various community mm -hmm. members and organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you find sometimes people within your own, the, your own medical community as kind of whether purposefully or not creating barriers that you have to work around. Oh yes. Yeah. I have encountered that. Yeah. I've encountered that. And and again that's an opportunity for for education. Some will listen, other ones mm -hmm. will just kinda like whatever. Whatever. Yeah. 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 But but um, but one thing I have to say is I mean I don't 
I don't keep quiet, nor, <laughs> nor is not anybody from my from my team yeah. stays quiet. I mean, we're respectful, uh, but we but you're but we, for your patients. we advocate for the patient yeah. all the time, all yeah. the time. It's, that's an ongoing daily thing, yeah. even within our um, within our own Latino mm -hmm. uh, providers and agencies. Mm -hmm. that we find we've been in situations where we need to educate that individual about you know this is what this is what this, this is the is, deal this yeah. is the deal yeah and this is why we do it yeah. this way and okay. you know and this is these are the reason why I'm calling is because of NYC. I see. yeah so it's and there's mm -hmm. that ongoing yeah. education all right. Is there anything in closing that you would like to add or anything that we didn't cover that you would like to talk about? Um, I know we could go on and <laughs> yeah, on and on. Know. In fact, I'm like, in, the, in, when, in your downtime, when you're not you know, busy out in the field, mm -hmm. I'll probably follow up with you on a lot of these uh, things. Yeah, but. sure. No. Um, the only thing I have to say has been, uh, for me, is is been a privilege to work with with this population, mm -hmm. uh, this community. Mm -hmm. They have become part of part of me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's amazing how our work can take us and okay. pass unanticipated, yep. and how they can really. Yeah. So I would imagine it has solidified your or kind of confirmed your choice to get into healthcare mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As in, you know, in essence, in, in a sense that this was, you know, waiting for you. Yes, and for sure. that's very true. And and it makes, and, and also I think it has open opportunities as well. What I'm, what I've been doing for the last 14 years mm -hmm. is to op open many opportunities to, mm -hmm. to expand my, my knowledge and, and to be an advocate for migrant health mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and to, um, and to, be out there and not to be afraid to speak up. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I, that I think I have learned through these years is that that you need to, you need to speak up. You need to voice your opinion respectfully, mm -hmm. of course, um, but you can. You need to voice those opinions and and provide that education to people and say, you know, I I know about this and the reason why is X Y Z and this is what I see. Blah blah blah. So it's just to, to provide those that that expertise, and, yeah. uh, but definitely I they provide the this work has provided me with an amazing experience. It's been a great, interesting, interesting, very interesting, knowing ride phenomenal, and... beautiful, wonderful people, yes. hardworking people, yes. honest people. People that are very what I've just yeah. found in my own research and teaching courses on this is how important they've been to the development of kind of the fabric of the culture mm -hmm. of our, our community, yes. our you know, in the West Coast, not only in economics but mm -hmm. but in other ways mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they're a very vital part of our community. Oh totally. So. And yeah, and we don't give them the credit that That's they right. deserve. That's right. That they deserve. Yeah. Well thank you so You're much. Welcome. It was mm -hmm. wonderful to talk with you. Thank and you.